Hi, I'm Mary Colbert, and welcome to Dr. Colbert's podcast, Divine Health Podcast. I'm Mary Colbert, and... I'm Dr. Colbert. (laughs) Hey there. I don't think we have to really introduce you. you I think most people know who you are. (laughs) I'm really excited about this topic because what we're going to be talking about today, folks, is in an epidemic, not just in America, around the world. So I hope that you will share this podcast with your friends and your families. Because the information that we're going to bring to you is so crucial for your brain. The thing without your brain, you cannot function. And we're going to give you some amazing information. I'm so excited about this, Don. And so many people ask me, Dr. Colbert, why did you write this book? I mean, you've written books on stress and on gut health and hormone health. It's because my father developed Alzheimer's at an early age, in his 50s. But it wasn't recognized, but then he was placed in a nursing home in his 70s, and he died at age 81 of pneumonia along with Alzheimer's disease. And I've been looking for over 30 years for the answers to Alzheimer's disease, and it wasn't until I had written so many books that it just dawned on me, we have the keys. And I have to tell you, folks, especially for those that are believers in Christ, This man was a man of God. Yes, He loved the Lord. He did. He knew the word better than anybody. He lived it. He preached it. He walked it. And he wasn't diabetic either. And he wasn't diabetic. So you kind of did a paradigm shift with me like, Lord, what is this? And so what Don has done in the last 20 years, because he realized the godly, you know, how godly his father was, how diligent he was, and yet this disease disease still came upon him. How can that be? And I think we have to ask ourselves and examine these things on every way, because we all want to blame God. God, why did you let this happen? God, why is this happening to me? Well, folks, listen, one of the things that we're going to be addressing, and we have found this to be true, What you can do, God will not do. It's real simple. You can't beg God. You can't buy God. You can't bribe God. So what is it? What is it? And Don, I really believe you have found some major keys. There's major keys. There's no one answer to Alzheimer's. Because like I say, my dad developed Alzheimer's actually in his early 50s and then was actually diagnosed in his 60s and was actually put in a nursing home in his 70s. And then died at age 81 of Alzheimer's with pneumonia. But my mother worked until she was 82 years of age in a bank. Had a and she's sharp still mind. alive. Still alive. But then she started developing Alzheimer's disease a few years right. ago. It was brought on most likely by her type 2 diabetes. And so, again, uh, for my father, my father actually had the Alzheimer's gene. How do I know? Because I have a single copy of the Alzheimer's gene. That's the ApoE4 gene. They didn't have a test back years ago when my father was initially diagnosed. Okay, so so I think it's important that we pause right here. This is important. This is a very important key for people to understand. There is a blood test that people need to go and get. From their primary care doctor. It's it's called the ApoE gene test. And there's there's ApoE, uh, the ApoE4 gene is the Alzheimer's gene. There's a single copy. If you have one copy of that gene, you stand a 30% risk of developing Alzheimer's disease, 30%. But if you have two copies of the Alzheimer's gene, the ApoE4 gene, you stand a 50% risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. In other words, you stand a very high risk because this gene, when you have this gene, there are uh, key things that increase your risk of Alzheimer's. Number one, your body produces more saturated fat. So you have a greater risk of heart attack and stroke and Alzheimer's disease. One key thing we see in these patients, they usually have high, or excuse me, your body produces more cholesterol from saturated fat. So you, even if you don't eat a lot of saturated fats, the saturated fats you eat will produce more cholesterol. So usually these people have high cholesterol levels. Now, I know I can feel the thoughts right now. I don't want to know. Used to, 20 years ago, people had the attitude, I don't want to know if I have that gene. Folks, it has changed. 
Right. It has completely We can changed. manipulate this gene. That's yes. what's so cool about it. And that's why you do want to know. Yeah, exactly. But let me tell you, not just high saturated fats the, or high cholesterol levels these people have. These people also tend to have insulin resistance of the brain at an earlier age. Literally, as teenagers, they usually develop insulin resistance of the brain. So their brain doesn't fire as well. Insulin resistance of the brain means the brain cells do not take up glucose as well. So they get brain fog and brain fatigue and poor memory, even as a teen, sluggish memory. And so the brain's starving for glucose. These people are more insulin resistant of the brain at an early age. So we and see so that many, in our kids. And so many times what's happening, the doctors will go and uh, prescribe this Adderall yeah, for these right. kids to make their brains fire because they're not firing. When in fact, it could be these other factors. Well, it could be. It could be just insulin resistance or it could be lots of sugar, which will affect you. Many things will affect that. Also, again, your, um, you know, m and m Skittles, those uh, food dyes and things will affect the brain. But the other wheat, thing, wheat. <laughs> the other thing that really affects the people with the Alzheimer's gene is alcohol. Alcohol yeah. literally speeds up the progression of Alzheimer's wow. disease at warp wow. speed in those with the Alzheimer's gene, either a single or a double copy. Simply put, the Alzheimer's gene and alcohol do not mix. It pushes you toward Alzheimer's at warp speed. Wow. And the other thing that's critically important to know is if you get, if you have a concussion or if you have amnesia after a head injury, your risk of developing Alzheimer's doubles. If you have this gene? No, just mm -hmm. regular. Oh, just even If you have a concussion people. or if you have wow. post, post um Head injury, amnesia for 30 minutes So or you're less. in a car crash? Yes. You're in, uh, if you have that, your risk of Alzheimer's doubles. But if you have the Alzheimer's gene, ApoE4 gene, your risk of developing Alzheimer's increases by tenfold. In other words, head trauma with this gene progresses you toward Alzheimer's because your brain forms more beta amyloid after an injury. Yeah. Okay, so for the people that sit there and they're like, man... You know, I played football or kickboxing right. or boxing, and I've I've got so many injuries I lost count. Hope right. for them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Once you follow these key things, we do. But again, first we we've got to realize that if you're a kid, if you have a positive family history of Alzheimer's disease, especially at a young age, you want to get your child tested for the ApoE4 gene. If they have it, do not let them do contact sport like football. Yeah. Or soccer, hitting the ball with their head hard, or mixed martial arts, or lacrosse, or motorcycle riding, or if they ride a bike, make sure they wear a helmet. So these are critically important. Now, if they have had concussions, if they have the gene, I'm going to show you what to do. We're going to show you what to do as far as how to combine the right hormones with the right diet and all of these key factors that literally reverse early, and usually mid-stage Alzheimer's disease. You want to get a hold of this book, Dr. Colbert's Healthy Brain Zone. We want to keep you in the healthy brain zone. And this book is so full of information of what to do, things you can do to offset and reduce your chances of developing Alzheimer's and memory loss and dementia. You need to get a hold of this book. Because we're not going to be able to cover everything in the podcast. You're not going to get everything that this book has. So you definitely want to do that. Go to our website, drcolbert.com or divinehealth.com, and get a hold of this book. Now, this book is sold on Amazon and Barnes & Noble, but you can get it from our website, and it helps our podcast. It helps fund what we do. Anything that you do in supporting of us in Divine Health, you become a partner of Don and Mary Colbert in Divine Health, and we appreciate it. It enables us to do what we do. Don spends thousands and thousands of dollars, and this is no joke, on going to seminars and traveling around the world and meeting with some of the top people in health and seminars that your traditional doctors never even take time for. They usually go to a pharmaceutical or nutraceutical or some sort of conference. That's not Don. Don is on the outlook for everything and anything that he finds Mary, that may what, have an answer. What I actually did is I took all the different nutritional supplements that protect the brain, and I found the ones that work the best. You say, how on earth did you do this? 
Well, I use computerized acupuncture point testing. Right. And we literally have determined what are some of the key nutraceuticals that help the brain. And I developed my product line called the Brain Zone Basic and the Brain Zone Advanced and the Brain Zone Focus that literally help support the brain. And the, uh, so, again, our Brain Zone products are on our website at uh, Dr. Colbert, drcolbert.com. But these are products that li- literally assist you in helping to lower that homocysteine level, that toxic amino acid that causes inflammation in the brain. More and to talk you can't about that. get this in food. No, you can't because realize 40% of the people I see have a mutation in the MTHFR gene that is extremely important for the brain to function, to convert folic acid to its active form, which is MTHFR, which is methyl tetrahydrofolate reduction. Now, what? Now, Don, that was a mouthful. I know, but what we do is I we could give. Never repeat okay, that. just say MTHFR. <laughs> okay, thank We you. give the active form of folic acid with bimethylglycine with methylcobalamin, which is the active form of B12, in the right dosages, and it helps to lower homocysteine levels in the brain. Now, homocysteine, I check this routinely in my patients. People with a high homocysteine level are more apt to have inflammation in the brain. And they're more active, active, uh, more likely to have degeneration in the brain. It's important to get that homocysteine level less than 10. But if you have the Alzheimer's gene, the ApoE4 gene, it's really important to get it down to 7 or below. Now, again, most doctors don't check homocysteine levels. And if they do, the level that the lab shows is normal is many times 0 to 19.2. 19. 19.2. That's if too it's high. over 10, and if it's 19, your brain is inflamed. It's, it's on fire. It's on fire, a brain on fire, and you're pushing your brain toward Alzheimer's. We got to get that homocysteine level wow. down. So I routinely check homocysteine levels. I talked to my staff and I said, if anyone's 65 or older, offer them the homocysteine level and the APOE gene test. Those are critical for most everyone because 25% of the population has a positive APOE gene, either a, a one in four, one in four. They have the Alzheimer's gene, one in wow. four. Now, twenty percent have the single mutation, but five percent have the double mutation. That's the one that pushes you toward Alzheimer's disease. Fifty percent of those patients get Alzheimer's disease. And so many people, their lifestyle, they're doing things ignorantly. They yes. have no idea that is pushing them further and further into <clears throat> yes. that dark territory. And we need to talk about what does it because yeah. it's so easy to prevent. But if we keep doing the same thing we've always done, eating the same way with the same lifestyle factors, we're pushing our brains toward Alzheimer's. Okay, so it's important for people that are watching right now and listening to this podcast that you understand that there are things that you really can do to assist your brain. Oh, yes. And there are really things you can stop doing to right. help your brain. So that is really important. And they've got to be willing to make a change in right. their life. It doesn't just happen. I just want you to know good health just doesn't just happen. It doesn't. Just like becoming wealthy or financially blessed, it doesn't just happen. You work at it. You have to go to a job. You have to work. You have to do things. So you have to be smart. So there are some things you really can do and some things you need to stop doing to improve Absolutely. your brain health. Simple. Now I have to listen. I, I sit here and listen to you and knowing that you have one of these genes from your father um, that you inherited. And I think there is nothing wrong with this guy's brain. And the reason why is because he's oh, doing these things. I've been things. doing this for years. And thank and, goodness I have. And the supplements that you're taking yeah. that you cannot get from food. Now, that's an important that's factor. People need to know. They go, oh, well, whatever I need, I can get from my food. No, nope, that's just not true. So anyway, so go ahead, Don. Tell well, us Mary, some of the things. First of all, there are actually four types of dementia. Now, okay. dementia is simply degeneration of the brain. And Alzheimer's is the most common type of dementia. And 70% of dementia is due to Alzheimer's disease. But there's also three other forms of dementia. Lewy body dementia is found mainly in Parkinson's patients. And that's 20% of dementia. 
And then the other, the last two are combinations. So the 10% of dementia is left are a combination of vascular dementia, a poor blood supply to the brain, or a history of black buildup in the arteries to the brain. And from, uh, also there's uh, Pick's disease, which is frontotemporal dementia, where the frontal portion of the brain starts to degenerate. And this affects personality before mm. it affects the memory. But wow. those, are the, those are the dementias. Now, there's six major forms now, of Alzheimer's. Now, you said something very powerful there. One of the four, yeah. the personality changes? Yes. Oh, my goodness, yes. Wow. These people begin to get uh, delusional or they, their personality becomes different. And that's, that's the uh, frontotemporal or Pick's disease. Wow. Frontotemporal dementia. So where they <clears throat> might have been at one time very friendly, loving, and outgoing. Right. And then they become very bitter or, or suspicious, suspicious or they develop compulsive personalities or they ah. delusional where they have false belief that something is true and it's obviously false. Like I've had wow. patients with this. So wow. again, that's, but that's rare. That's like 5% or less of okay, dimensions. It's hey, rare. <clears throat> we may be helping somebody who's watching right, right. now and think, let's get them tested. But then there's yeah. six different forms of Alzheimer's, which is pretty amazing because uh, and most Alzheimer's is a combination of two or three of these, which is pretty amazing, too. Mm -hmm. So uh, type 1 Alzheimer's is the hot or inflammatory type with inflammation in the brain. It comes from chronic inflammation. We do a simple blood test. I do this on every patient I see. And it's called the HS, or high-sensitive C-reactive protein test. And if it's equal to or greater than 0 0.9, you have inflammation in your body and in your brain. Now, routinely, I see this over 0 0.9, and I check it routinely. Also, wow. homocysteine. If your homocysteine is greater than 10, you have inflammation in your body and in your brain. But it's a, if it's over, if you have the Alzheimer's gene, if it's over 7, you got inflammation. What is homocysteine? Homocysteine is a toxic amino acid that builds up in our bodies when we don't get enough of the active form of folic acid, of oh. B12. Oh. And trimethylglycine, which are in foods. Again, it's mainly your green leafy vegetables and your whole grains and things like that that have the B vitamins in them. Okay, but our so, products help. <clears throat> oh, yes. We, okay. we have that in our Good. brain zone basic. Good. Because, again, inflammation is one of the key factors mm -hmm. with Alzheimer's. That's okay. not type one. And that's inflammation of the brain. We pick it up usually with elevated HSCRP. Inflammation also comes from. Belly fat. The more belly fat you have, the more inflammation. Food. The more fr deep fried food, the more inflammation. The more trans fats. We talk about trans fats. Trans fats are hydrogenated fats. It's in your potato chips, know, your French I fries, Every your sweets, we, your cakes, your cookies, your brownies. Your we go to dinner or somewhere, and if they offer French fries, you know, and I start picking, Don starts looking at it going, you know, that's fried. <laughs> I know. Fried. It's so good. The flesh loves it. <laughs> but we're talking about inflammation so, of the brain. You open the door for inflammation. I know. So I end up <clears throat> eating like three or four because I'm so convicted. But also but. inflammation comes from chronic, uh, chronic infectious diseases like chronic cold sore. If you have a chronic cold sore, your inflammatory markers are up. Ah. And then inflammation is damaging your brain. Wow. If you have chronic bronchitis, chronic sinusitis, chronic Lyme disease, many of my patients that were diagnosed with Alzheimer's in the past have had Lyme disease. When you clear the Lyme disease, the Alzheimer's went. Don, why doesn't doctors know this? All remember when you this. had the flu? Remember when you had strep throat? Remember how your brain didn't think right? That's because yeah. of high CRP. When people wow. come into my office, I have picked up so many times. For instance, back a couple of months ago, a lady came in. She had an elevated CRP, and she had a little bit of white cells in her urine. I said, have you had a bladder infection? Yes, I had a bad bladder infection. And see, uh, an infection will raise your CRP. If you have it raised a lot, it's going to affect your brain, your memory. So when you had the flu or you had strep throat with high fever. Or COVID. You notice, or COVID. You notice how you couldn't think? Yeah. Well, that's what happens with high CRP. When your, brain's when your CRP's high, your brain's inflamed. Your brain's like its own fire, and you can't think well. And chronic inflammation of the brain leads to degeneration of the brain and buildup. Here's what happens, folks. Beta amyloid. Beta amyloid is a goo that collects in the brain that literally downsizes the brain, shuts off portions of the brain to protect itself against the inflammation. Wow. So we are seeing beta amyloid accumulation, which is a sign of Alzheimer's, 
due to chronic inflammation and chronic infection. Gee, no so, wonder there's things you can do to prevent. So that's Man. why infl- inflammation is the one of the number one triggers. And with Alzheimer's, it's like I say, a combination of like two or three factors. Number one, we almost always see chronic inflammation. Okay, type 1, 1.5, Alzheimer's 1.5 is glucotoxic or sweet from insulin resistance of the brain. In other words, type 3 diabetes of the brain where the brain cells can't take in sugar. You've had too much insulin, too high insulin levels, too much sugar. So now the sugar can't get inside the brain cells. You can't think good. And this happens to all the people with the Alzheimer's, the ApoE4 gene. Okay, then after that comes the, uh, the coal type. The cold type or the atrophic type occurs in most people around 50 to 60 when the hormones crash. Those, hormone, those hormones are critical. That's why years ago I wrote the book Hormone Zone. Little did I know then how important the hormones are for the brain. But testosterone wow. to the brain is so powerful, men. Estrogen is so powerful for women, unless, of course, you've had breast cancer. But testosterone is that key hormone that repairs the brain neurons, the brain cells, and it literally helps the brain from shrinking and it supports the synapses. And then some testosterone is converted to estradiol, which improves blood flow to the brain. But both estradiol and testosterone boost the most powerful protein for the brain called brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This stuff is amazing. It's like miracle growth for the brain. Wow. When your brain-derived neurotrophic factor increases, you start to grow new brain cells. You start to literally Im- Im- so repair the brain synapses. Can heal. Yes, it can, unless it's too gummed up with beta amyloid. And then, and, it- w- and then we have to teach you things to start clearing that mess out, like exercise, intermittent fasting, good sleep on your side where you start to decrease the beta amyloid. So again, it all works together. But right now, we're talking about trophic factors. These trophic factors are so powerful at restoring the brain by boosting this uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Also, DHEA, pregnenolone, I'll go in detail about these powerful hormones, as well as natural thyroid. And then we also have nutrients that boost brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Wow. Nutrients uh, that's in my brain zone advanced such as 7,8-dihydroxyflavone, such as low-dose lithium. I we'll be able to keep all of our products in <laughs> okay, stock. Okay, I know. I'm just sitting here thinking our manufacturer is going to be cranking day and night. I'm going to make sure. I'm going to make sure of that. You need to get a hold of this book and read it and uh, decipher and write in it and mark in it. Yes, and absolutely. And we made it easy. We made it's it easy. so easy because what it, he's done, he has, he has uh, dumbed it down for me. <laughs> My wife can understand it well. That's right. <laughs> yes, she can. If I can get it, I know you can get it. So many times you have no idea how true that is. Um, I have the MRS degree, and that's all. That's it. I barely graduated from high school. <laughs> but she so did graduate from Rama. I did Bible graduate College. <laughs> from high school. Oh, thank Lottie. Uh, <laughs> then I went to Rama. So anyway, but and then I go. To, I did go to ORU for a while, very short while. And then went to Rama. But anyway, you want to get a hold of this book. It is simple. It's understandable. You can read it. You're going to learn. You're going to be, become the smartest person in your circle of friends and family. They're going to think, where did you get your degree? And Mary, the book that goes with it yes. is Beyond Keto. This should have been titled The yes. Alzheimer's Prevention Diet or The Alzheimer's Reversal Diet. Yep. What I have done is I've combined a healthy Mediterranean diet because there's mainly unhealthy Mediterranean diets with a very healthy keto diet. And the keto diet is the key for preventing and reversing Alzheimer's disease. Now, we do have a keto book that's very good, but it's short term. That should be short term. That's for weight term. loss. That that's was for, for weight, weight loss. loss. And doing the keto for short term weight is long loss term. is great. This is lifestyle. Yeah. This is how you live. This is how you live right here. And you can do this. And being married to Don Colbert, I can promise you I can do it. You yes. can do it. Um, he helps me along the way. My flesh does want to scream sometimes, but Okay, does, but Mary, let me just work. finish my, okay, we've talked about uh, three of the types of Alzheimer's. We talked about type 1, which is inflammatory, mm-hmm. type 1, 5, which is glucotoxic or sweet. We talked about type 2, which is atrophic or cold. That's your low amount of uh, brain nutrients, uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factors, nerve growth factor, low hormones, and low vitamin D. Vitamin D actually turns on over 900 genes in the body. 
and it helps to restore and repair synapses in the brain. Vitamin D is critical. That's a major thing I did for my mom yeah. as I helped boost and optimize her vitamin D. But also type 3 Alzheimer's is toxic or vile. You know, certain heavy metals trigger Alzheimer's like mercury, lead, cadmium, arsenic. Also, toxic mold triggers Alzheimer's in That's a lot of huge people. right there. And 25% of people have the inability to get rid of mold toxins out of their body and out of their brain. And it creates tremendous inflammation in their brain. I have a whole chapter on that. Now, also, there's type 4 Alzheimer's is the vascular or pale. And that's just this decreased blood flow to the brain that happens when the, you get plaque buildup in the brain. And then the last one is type 5, which is traumatic or dazed. And these are people that get, um, you know, concussions and brain injuries. And especially if you have the ApoE4 gene, if you have that ApoE4 gene, you have 10 times the risk of Alzheimer's when you have a concussion. So it's critically important if you have that gene and you have a concussion, here's what you do. You get on these powerful hormones. I put these patients on testosterone. I put them on pregnenolone. How much pregnenolone you say? 50 milligrams a day. Some people need 100, but most 50 milligrams a day. And that's women too. And DHEA, I put them on. And I use the micronized pregnenolone and micronized DHEA. I put them on micronized DHEA for men, 25 milligrams once a day. For women, 10 milligrams once a day. Sometimes I'll double it if I have to, if they're not improving. And then testosterone, I'll either use pellets for women or pellets for men or injections for men or women or creams. I'll use all three. And depending, it's kind of like, uh, again, the, the pellets and shots work better. For my mom, I had to pull her out of uh, Alzheimer's and I had to use the injections to get her out. And so, again, you have to, use, you have to boost those trophic factors, the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, the nerve growth factor. We do that. I'm going to be talking about a whole program here on the next podcast because I don't have time to get into that. But again, if you do these things, the brain starts to turn on. It's absolutely amazing how the brain turns on. This is so exciting. I want you to know that we are committed and we believe for every disease, God has an answer. And it's just a matter, it's our job to find it. It's our job to find that answer. And so that's what we're trying to do, to bring to you the most current, up-to-date information for you and your family. Because the will of God is that you walk in divine health. That you God prosper and be in health, you. even he as your does. soul prospers. That's he wants John you to two. live in health. He's not, tr- he's not a child abuser, and he doesn't use mm-hmm. sickness and disease Amen. to teach you anything. That, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And Alzheimer's is not abundant life. It's folks. not abundant it's not. life. And the enemy is not a respecter of persons either. What he does one, he does for another. But what I'm excited about is that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. The spirit of the living God is in you. It's in me. And he wants to bring us into truth so that we walk okay. in divine health. Amen. Get a hold of this information. Walk in it, do it. Go to drcolbert.com, divinehealth.com. Take a look at our products and walk in divine health. God bless you. Until next time.